In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can save 10 plus hours a week and make more money, whether you're a business owner, a freelancer, or working a nine to five job. I'm Lindsay Gonzalez. I share AI and automation strategies and builds every week to help you save time and make more money. And today I'm sharing the exact AI and automations audit that I use for my clients and that I used for my nine to five that's helped us to save over a thousand hours per year and added $300,000 in revenue all through AI and automations. So if you're interested in that, I drop new videos every week, hit the like button and subscribe and let's dive in. So a lot of business owners, especially small business owners with small teams, don't have a good sense of where their time and money is actually going. And especially as it relates to lead follow-up and the, the sales process. They also tend to be somewhat disconnected from like what the repetitive tasks are that are eating into their profits. And that's often because small business owners are wearing 13 different hats and they're basically the head of every department. And so you can't fix what you don't measure. But once you measure it, the solutions and your return on investment become pretty obvious. Okay, so I'm gonna share this quick four-step framework for you. So whether you are a business owner looking to make improvements in your own business, work less, make more, save time and sanity, or you're a freelancer or a consultant, and you're looking to implement something structured so that you can help business owners implement AI and automations in their business, or if you were like me a year ago, and are just working in nine to five, but you wanna make your job easier and impress your boss and get a raise, then this is for all of you. Okay, I know this sounds tedious, but the first step is to have you and your team track your activities every single day for at least a couple weeks. And there is a reason why people who document and journal and track what they eat every day lose weight. But just by virtue of tracking, you get insight into what you're doing or what you're eating every single day. So this is my actual activity log for my nine to five for this week. But all you need is the date, the start and end time and what the task was. And so what this does is it creates a baseline so you know what you're currently spending time on, what are the manual repetitive tasks that you and your team do over and over again and how long everything takes. This is going to allow you to compare before you implemented AI and automations into your business and then after to really see what that data looks like, like what were, was the impact that it was made on your business. And then at the same time, you want to establish a baseline for your lead pipeline. So that's the lead response time. How long does it take your business to reach out to a lead once you've received an inquiry? Your lead to appointment or your lead to closed deal conversion rate. So depending on what type of business that you are running or that you're working with as like a consultant or a freelancer, it might look different. So for us, we're an installation company at my nine to five. And so leads contact us and then we book an appointment to go do an inspection and then provide an estimate. So if you're a fellow service business or home service business, then that might be a similar process for you. But the point is you wanna track exactly where that conversion falls off and where people are falling through the cracks. Then you also wanna track your close rate. So that's if you have 10 opportunities to sell, how many of those people buy? Then you want to track your average revenue per lead. And so we call that ADL. And basically what that is, is the amount of money on average that you make anytime someone contacts your business. So that's not every appointment booked. That's not every customer. That's every time an inquiry is made into your business. And the reason why that's helpful to track is because that's going to let you know, OK, if I make three thousand dollars every time somebody contacts my business, then that's like incentivizing you and your team. Like I need to answer the phone when people call. I need to immediately respond to inquiries via email or text or whatever it is. We're just measuring all this at this point to provide that baseline. And so we know how AI and automations will fit in and improve that. Okay, so next is step two. So we're gonna take those time trackers, we're gonna upload them to ChatGPT and we're gonna ask it, please calculate the amount of time spent on each task and sum the amounts per task for the week. And we're just gonna, export as a PDF. And then we're gonna send that off so that it can do its thing and analyze. But the cool thing about this is you might find ways to improve processes or save time or save money, make extra money without even implementing anything just by having yourself be aware of it. So one good example at my nine to five is we implemented something where the guys that are working out in the field who are in the attics, they're sending me pictures and videos. And that really has almost completely cut down on the time it takes me to drive all the way out to a job site, go crawl around in the attic to get video and pictures because technically I'm the marketing coordinator at my job and then drive all the way back, edit them, put captions on them, do all that and then post it to social media. So that's just one example, but you're not gonna be aware of how much time you're spending driving out to the job site, crawling in, in the attic and getting those pictures and videos until you start tracking it. And so by looking at this, you're likely gonna find those manual repetitive tasks that you have to do that are 
pretty critical for your business, but that you don't need to physically do. It's not adding value for you or your team to be doing it. Another great example of this, which I set up an automation for, is reaching out to our happy customers for video testimonials. Video testimonials are like the lifeblood for marketing. And so reaching out to 25 different customers every week and then having to call them back and text them and email them and do all this contacting, it was very time consuming. And so what I built was an automation that does it for me. And so not only does that save me time every week, but the response rate is way higher for people who are actually willing to do a video testimonial. Another tip that I have for you is to focus on the quick wins first. So the things that are gonna be the easiest or the quickest to fix, but are gonna have the biggest impact. So the perfect example of this was, I don't know if you're familiar with Angie Leads or it's also called Home Advisor, but basically a lead comes in and it's like a third party website and the website sends that inquiry to you and all of your competitors. So whoever contacts that, that lead first is likely gonna get that job. We're in the process of getting rid of our outsourced office that takes calls and follows up with leads and so on and so forth. But they were taking like four hours to reach out to these leads that were coming in. And as a result, the lead to appointment conversion rate was like 20%. So what I did was I built a simple automation that immediately sends a text and an email to those leads when they come in. And then if the leads don't respond, it sends them an, a follow-up in an hour and then after 24 hours and so on and so forth. So then our lead to appointment conversion rate for that lead group or that lead source went from 20% to 80 something percent. And I'm gonna be building an outbound voice agent that actually calls them immediately. So it's just gonna be another tool in our arsenal to make sure that we're winning that business. Okay, so as you're doing this, you're also gonna be looking at your lead pipeline. So that also includes follow-up. So following up with leads and then what that marketing and sales process looks like. If somebody sends a message on social media, are they being responded to? Are they being followed up with until they either book an appointment or they close? But if you start at the top of the funnel, you wanna look at the number of leads that you're getting, the number of appointments that you're booking, your close rate, so the actual number of customers that you get, how long your sales cycle is, because if it's 20 days long and you can shorten it to 11 and that saves you time and money, then that's an easy kind of low hanging fruit for your business. And then like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, track the average dollar per lead. So again, that's the average amount of money or revenue that you make per lead that contacts your business and not just like the average ticket for each customer, if that makes sense. If it's unclear, leave a comment and I'll try to explain it in a different way. And another great tip, if you have a team that you're working with, ask your team, ask them what's the most painful, annoying, taxing part of their job, or ask them, where do you see things like slipping through the cracks? It might not even be lead follow-up. It could be some other process in your business, but because you're like the boss, the big boss, you might not be seeing it because you're not like the boots on the ground for that particular area. So one example for me is this task right here. It was adding the before and after pictures to our website, big pain in the butt. It used to take me 45 minutes to post the pictures and write a full narrative. And it was just so tedious and so annoying. And I knew it was important because, you know, SEO and social proof and all that for marketing, but it was just such a pain in the butt. I dreaded doing it every day. So what I ended up doing was building a custom GPT that created that narrative for me that was written in our brand's tone and style and, you know, was unique and had a unique headline and meta description and all that each and every time. And actually, this is it right here. Very proud of it. But actually, I'm going to show it to you in action. OK, so these are the pieces of information that I enter and then the custom instructions for this custom GPT do the rest. So what used to take 45 minutes to do three before and after posts now takes maybe 10 to 15 minutes. So it creates a before and after narrative for each set of pictures, comes up with three unique headlines, a meta description, and I'm good to go. All I do is copy and paste it into our website. So that's just one example. And so if it saves me 35 minutes, five days a week, that's 175 minutes per week times 52 weeks is 9,100 minutes divided by 60 is 151 hours just for one task, just for me. So another way that you can get to the meat of this issue with your team is just listen to them complain. Are they always complaining about the same thing? Or are you as the business owner or are you as a consultant hearing your, your client always complain about the same things? And if they are, really listen because there's a solution that you can build that will make you invaluable to the business, possibly get you more money at your nine to five job, certainly get you money if you are working with a client. In my case, just all of the above, 
So that takes us into step three, and that's prioritizing based on capacity. So that means if your business can handle more customers or more clients right now, then prioritize the revenue generating improvements first. So for example, I built an automated lead follow-up system that would send pre-appointment videos like education content so that the leads were primed for our salesman to go do his presentation in the home. And then it would send video testimonials after the appointment to really get those people over the edge and see, wow, it's like this working with them. Like that's the kind of experience I wanna have. And so like those simple automations allowed us to close more deals but that also meant that we had more work to do. So we had to make sure that we actually had the staff to accommodate that. So be sure that you're considering that when you are going into this. Like if I bring on more business, are we gonna be able to handle it? If you can't handle more customers yet, then focus on saving time and money first. So free up those resources so that you have money to reinvest into hiring more people before you scale up. So an example of that at my nine to five, I automated and built an AI agent for our inventory management. And so a process that used to take our owner and our production manager hours every week, like they had to do it daily. Now it just happens in real time as we receive inventory or as the guys out in the field are using it. So it's just built into our process now. So now we're not over ordering stuff that we don't need or failing to order stuff we do need and then having to go run to Home Depot, thus wasting time. And then step four, track, tweak, and repeat. So after you implement the solutions, then continue to track and see what that change in the time spent on each task, what that change looks like over time. Look at the time saved, look at the money saved. That could be direct spending, meaning like, oh, we're not ordering 10 things that we don't need every month. Or it could be indirect, so, oh wow, we saved 20 hours and that's an indirect cost of the labor that was saved. So you'll get to see what's working, what's not working, what needs to be tweaked and what's next. So this is definitely not a one-time thing. It's a feedback loop that you keep on iterating and improving over time. And this is maybe the most important thing, but today is my birthday. And so if you've made it this far in the video, drop a birthday cake emoji down below so that I know you made it this far. Okay, so to recap, we are measuring and tracking to establish a baseline. Then we're analyzing and finding quick wins. We're prioritizing based on our business capacity, and then we're tracking and tweaking and iterating over and over again. Also, I built this tool for you so you can get a free AI and automation audit for your business. All you have to do is take five minutes and answer some questions, like I said, completely free, and get a custom game plan for what that would look like for you and your business. So if you wanna learn more about how to save time and make more money with AI and automations, whether you're a business owner, a freelancer, or you work at a nine to five, hit the like button, subscribe to this channel. I drop new content twice a week. And you wanna stick around for this upcoming video because I'm gonna show you how to vibe code your own lead magnet and connect it to workflows in N8N so that you can gather leads and not lift a finger. Don't forget to click down below for your free audit and I will see you in the next video.